So what's that old saying about best laid plans? A couple of months ago, Volvo reaches out and says, hey, come to Austin, Texas and drive our all new XC40. Now I was excited about this for two reasons. Number one, this is the first Volvo you and I are going to drive built off a completely new architecture. Of course, they got a name for it, compact modular architecture. We will discuss this in detail in this episode. And number two, I love Austin, Texas. So I had all these visions of taking this thing and putting it around the iconic spots of Austin, Texas, including the Salt Lake. However, best laid plans, the weather, well, let's just say it's not agreeing with us today and it is incredibly cold, people. So today, our tech review is gonna be two things. Number one, a tech dive on this, and number two, trying to avoid the weather. Okay, so I love you guys, but the rain and cold of Texas has gotten to be too much, so you and I are gonna do part of this episode back home in the California Republic with a stand-in, but this is not so much a stand-in as where some of the parts are pilfered from for the XC40. Now, if you've seen any of our Volvo episodes, the multiple Volvo episodes over the past, say, almost four years, you know that this S90 T6 all-wheel drive is fitted with a two-liter direct-injected gasoline four-cylinder aluminum engine. Now, where the XC40 diverges from this is one of the parts, major part, is missing. So this is 316 horsepower with a turbocharger and a supercharger. The XC40 makes do only with the turbocharger. So it's 248 horsepower comes in at 5,500 RPM and 258 pounds of torque comes in at 1,800 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 4,800 RPM. Now, one thing that does make the trip directly from the S90 over into the XC40 is the transmission. It is an eight speed automatic with manual control. So I believe that's everything in terms of propulsion, but I am gonna say if I were a bet man, you're going to see some of the electrification mapped to the XC40 that we've seen in the 90 and 60 cluster cars. So Volvo interior design, you and I have geeked out about it for an incredibly long time now, at least four years since the XC90, then they updated it for the XC60. And really it's not the usual, oh my God, look at the design or the tactile feel, or look at this feature. It's, they crossed the line. They went from just regular old design to elegance. And here you have some of the bits of elegance, like you got the 12.3 inch screen, the vertical vents, and the general theme and shape that was set in the 90 and 60 cluster cars. But this is more in a direction of playfulness. Follow me on this one for a minute. Like, look at the trim here. Yes, the wood is still on offer in a very fancy coming inscription model, but here in our design, they've got this like oddball trim, which if I'm honest, looks like the grill of an E43 Mercedes AMG. But then they've got these cool speaker grills, which are pilfered from the better 90, but this, instead of a Bowers Wilkins, it's Harman Kardon. And as an aside here, I geek out a lot about the Burmester systems and like the Porsche and the Mercedes and they are otherworldly and they damn well better be for six grand. Here, uh, I can't believe I'm saying it, but this rivals some of those six grand systems in this optional system in the XC40. Anyway, enough of a sales pitch for Harman Kardon. Uh, then back to some of the design pieces, like the console is a bit different and the whole thing is designed to update the proportions of the interior of a smaller car. But then there are some things that make it a little bit more sporty because again, this is a smaller car, sportier car. Uh, the steering wheel, for example, is a little bit more, I would say even more elegant than what you see in the XC90, the V90, and the XC60. Would like to see some of the updates from here go to there, so the opposite direction. Then there's the tactile feel, and it's hit and miss in some areas. The miss is pieces like this over here, very hard plastic, and I kind of see why they do that, because the starting point on this is much lower than those other Volvos that we've driven. But then there are pieces like this headliner, not quite the Alcantara in that Q7 that we drove, but this, it's like, um, it's almost like a denim, if I were to say that like a, a very thin cotton denim, and it really makes the whole interior, brings up the quality of the whole interior. Uh, and speaking of tactile feel, there's carpet, but it's not just carpet that you feel, it's carpet that's actually in the door panels. And in this case, it's what you call lava orange. It's only on offer in the R design, and I went out of my way to make sure we were driving the car with a lava orange interior, because you know when I first saw it at the LA Auto Show, I'm thinking, man, that's very super 70s. But you know what, I kind of like it and I love the contrast it has with the, what they call a charcoal seats and the charcoal dash. Um, interesting note though, 
you've probably heard about the subscription service that Volvo is offering on these. Uh, well, the lava orange interior is not on offer with the subscription service, and uh, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, they're trying to make the most popular combo of options as well as colors available for the care system as opposed to something that's wild like this. But I take my hat off to the designers and the color and trim people for having the balls to come up with an orange interior because that is pretty incredible. Then, speaking of balls, man, this they looked at this thing and they said, let's get away from making this coolest, most technical interior, and let's make it useful. And there are some really interesting tidbits in here. I went through this uh, with a designer recently, and he showed me all like the hidden stuff. First and foremost, you open up the glove box, and there's a little hook that comes out here, and you can hang a bag here. That's a neat little touch. Probably something I wouldn't use, but I totally get that for the female audience that's intended in this car. Uh, then notice there are no speakers down here. Uh, the speakers that would be normally the larger base enclosures in a vehicle like this, they've kind of pilfered the idea from the S-Class. Remember in the 2014 S-Class, they put the subwoofer into the firewall. Same situation here. And in the fancy version with this Harman Kardon, they have like an air subwoofer that sits in the spare tire just like in the XC90, and it kicks. Then, on top of all that, there is a trash can here. Like this, literally, you can put a toll receipt, whatever the case may be that you want to throw away, or you could use it as storage. They can literally put a trash can in the center console of the car. This, the theme here we talked about originally is elegance in Volvo interior design. Here, I would say this is very intelligent utility. And with that, we are back in the California Republic at the point of the episode where we're going to geek out about architecture. Now, the past three years, I have beaten into your head the concept of Volvo and scalable product architecture with a healthy side dose of Volkswagen and MQB. But what does that mean in practice? Well, it's the stuff you cannot see, things like the subframe, the structure that are shared and can make up disparate vehicles like a D-segment luxury car or a large crossover or Santa Maria Madre de Dios, that V60 wagon they just showed, which is by far the best looking new Volvo of the bunch, including this XC40 that we're driving today. Well, the scalable product architecture that makes up the 90 cluster of cars and the 60 cluster of cars is not making the jump to the XC40 and the coming 40 cluster of cars. And the main reason for that is dimensions. So the XC40 has a wheelbase of 106.4 and a length of 174.2. So as a basis of comparison, uh, it comes up to about here on an S90. So what they've done is they've created a completely different architecture called Compact Modular Architecture. Gotta tell you, these guys really need to work on these names because they're awful. Uh, well, there are some bits that make the jump from this architecture to the Compact Modular Architecture. Uh, the biggest one being the dash to axle ratio. And this isn't just an engineering trick, it's a design trick as well. Like you look at this, it's a front wheel drive based car, but it's attractive because of this to this. You just didn't know it. Well, if you look at an XC40, it has the exact same wheelbase as a Nissan Rogue. Problem with Nissan Rogue is the front wheel is here and the Volvo front wheel is here, which is why the Volvo is attractive and the Nissan ain't. Well, there's some other things that make the jump from the bits of spa to sma, or however we're going to make that word work. First is the setup in the front. It's a McPherson strut with a stabilizer bar. Then in the rear, it's a four-link multi-link unit. The wheels, 18s, 19s, or 20, depending on the trim. Then just like this, or pretty much any new Volvo, uh, front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Now there are two other things, but I'm going to save those for the full first drive review. Now, considering what the XC40 is trying to be, let's take a couple of minutes to focus on prudent numbers, first and foremost being the weight. Not exactly a porker, but also not strictly on the Atkins diet at 3,629 pounds. Then there's the currency of what the XC40 is trying to be, and that's prudent. So what's the cargo capacity? Well, with all the seats up, it's about 20 cubic feet. With some of the seats down, it's about 44 cubic feet. With all the seats down, it's 66.7 cubic feet. So put another way, it's enough for a trip to Costco with Kumo. Now let's put aside the prudent numbers, and I'm gonna leave you guys with a question in advance of a full first drive review. And the question is about electrification, because you and I both know if it maps to any other Volvos, there's going to be a plug-in hybrid version they call a T8. But here's the struggle. Uh, you look at this in a T8, the S90, it ain't cheap, people. It's about 72,000 US, the one we drove. 
And then there's the car that you and I are going to drive in the full first drive review of the XC40. It ain't the base like mid 30s or even the one that's gonna come out later, it's gonna be low 30s. No, we're driving the murdered out T5 all wheel drive with like the super cool interior and the fancy stereo. It's like mid 40s US dollars. So my question is this, and I'll put it like one of two ways. How much would you be willing to pay extra for a plug-in hybrid, a T8 version of an XC40, or what's too much for an XC40 T8? And you know what? Also let me know if you drive an electric car or some sort of a plug-in like hybrid thing. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV on Word, Motoman TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I'm going to uh, kill the suspense here now. Yes, we are going to drive this in the pissing down rain of Texas. It didn't stop while we were driving. So it's going to be um, a very pragmatic full first drive review. Um, and that's pretty much it. Oh, by the way, download our updated app from the Amazon App Store. Until I see you next time, bis später.